you want to focus on starting young. So while focusing on nutrition for our adult patients is vital, there's a large demographic that many chiropractors are missing, children. Quality nutrition starts in the first few moments of a child's life. It's also important to supply them with the proper nutrients. This is kind of important because once you start the kids uh, doing the right thing from day one, um, it's going to be easier um, to keep them on a good program, nutritional program. And, you know, but too many parents don't really know how to feed their kids. I think if there's a state in um, back east somewhere, and if the, uh, the, the, the nurse, the, the school nurse, if the school nurse uh, because your child is disruptive because you, you feed it sugar and a bunch of other yeah things that gets them going uh, when they get to school they're just bouncing around and if the school nurse uh, recommends them to be on Ritalin and if you don't put your child on Ritalin the, the state can come and take that child from your home so yeah you want to focus on starting young oh but my baby's already eight years old oh you start him now it's never too late so we want to help the whole family because if you help your patient, it helps the whole family, right? Okay, where it all began. As chiropractors, we understand the importance of nutrition for our patients. Our patients do best when we take a holistic approach to their health. So Dee Dee Palmer, the father of the chiropractic profession, taught that focusing on all three areas of health, emotional, physical, emotional, and chemical, can achieve the best result. So nutrition is the key element to the chemical side of Palmer's triad. And of course, back in those days, you know, 100 plus years ago, um, it, they didn't have the GMOs and they didn't have all the, the other crap, but they still had foods that were not healthy for you. And if you ate too much of the wrong foods, you know, if you ate too, too much bread and you know, too much pasta, you know, that can also affect your blood sugars. And so kids are young. So while focusing on nutrition for our adult patients is vital, there's a large demographic that many chiropractors are missing, children. So let's say you get, you know, a parent coming in well that parent has three kids so that's potential four new patients parent three kids so now you have four new patients not only to help them uh, nutritionally but also adjusting you know be the chiropractor for the kids and then you need to tell them stories how you know you've you've been there you know you've adjusted little kids like i've even been in the hospitals where my parent my patients have said hey, dr dr Samson, will you be with me in the labor and delivery room because I have a technique that I do uh, when a woman's on, on going through um, uh, contractions that I do this little technique on the back of the SPs, the PSAS, uh, all that area in the lower back. Whenever she's in contraction, I do some work on that area to kind of block the pain gate so she doesn't have to be on an epidural and it helps so much. You know, those babies pop out and then usually within an hour, I'm adjusting the baby. Um, in fact, just, uh, two weeks ago, um, the mom of, of, uh, <laughs> well, she's a mom now, but she was in the birth canal when I helped her mother, uh, 20 years ago. And, uh, she came in and she, she's having a baby. So she wanted me to teach that technique to her husband to be in the labor and delivery. And so I taught him, they came in the office, we taught him and great delivery and even her first baby, which is usually the hardest, right? So things that we can do with our kids and, uh, and start teaching them. Now, adequate nu uh, nutrition during infancy and early childhood is essential to ensure the, the growth, health, and development of children to their full potential. Poor nutrition increases the risk of illness and is responsible for one-third of the estimated 9.5 million deaths that occur in, in 2006 in younger children uh, younger than five years old. That's just a horrible thing. You know, we're spending all this money helping all these other people across the, the world um, and it's mostly political crap, but when we can't help our own kids in our own country and because uh, we have the potential, we have the resources here to help these kids. Uh, some schools in some uh, cities, you know, are, are they have this called Title I here in Utah where they can actually, uh, you can drop off your kids. Basically, schools like daycare drop off your kids as early as seven o'clock in the morning while the mom goes to work because she's a single parent and the kids get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then mom can pick them up after six o'clock at night. So the kids are there almost, you know, 10, 12 hours a day. It's kind of sad, but the other sad thing is um, 
look at the food that they're feeding these kids. If you want to see what they're feeding in schools, go on YouTube and type in school lunch, S-K-O-L, I believe. It's lunch, school lunch. And you'll see interviews of lunchroom workers. They have no idea what they're feeding these kids. They're like, well, um, it came in a big frozen thing and we're supposed to cut it up and fry it and feed that to the kids. And they go, are you going to eat that? No, I'm not going to eat that, but we're going to give it to the kids. Really? So, you know, there's a lot of work we need to do. So again, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I've actually had a couple of kids that look like this. Childhood obesity rates have more than tripled since 1980. More than one third of children and adolescents are now overweight or obese with the numbers on the rise. I remember back in the 60s and 70s when I was in school, um, there was the token fat kid. You know, there was maybe one or two overweight. And that was, that's probably because they had an emotional event at home and they had to cover up their emotions by eating, you know. Um, but now it's like I said, it's one third. So for the first time in over 200 years, the current generation of children could potentially live shorter lives than their parents. If childhood obesity rates continue at their current rates, lives may be shortened as much as five years. These conditions strain an already troubled healthcare system and make childhood obesity one of the most pressing health concerns of our day. Um, quality nutrition starts in the first few moments of a child's life. So you wanna encourage you know, your patients if they're newly married, uh, or they're pregnant, you're adjusting their back, and you're adjusting their sciatic because their sciatic is screaming. Um, you want to encourage them to to nurse. You know, breastfeeding is is like the best thing ever, not just for the bonding um, for the kids, but it really helps with the the child's microbiome. Um, and that basically, when you start the kid the right way with the gut, the microbiome, um, it really affects the child into adulthood because of the good flora the good microbiome that's there to help with diseases and their, their overall health. And even if the mom says, I don't have time to nurse, I, I, um, you know, I work well, my, uh, my wife um, who passed away four years ago, cancer, but when she was going to work, she uh, would nurse them in the morning and at nighttime before bed. But when she went to work, she would pump, she had a breast pump. And she, many years ago, it was the one that was just, it was manual. <laughs> But then it, it turned into the electric ones, the battery operated ones, where she had a double pumper in there. She was able to, to pump in the in the bathroom stall. And then I would give her a little bucket, a uh, little igloo with ice in there. And then she would put the bottles of milk in there. And then she, that, that would go in the fridge and feed the baby. So, so they got breast milk the first year. So either you can you can nurse or you can pump. You know, one one or another. But encourage your patients to do that because it'll be really helpful for them. Now, when breastfeeding is not an option. You know, what's good for adults is good for kids. It's important to know about the drawbacks to use using traditional formula. Many traditional formulas lack these DHAs and amino arachidonic acids, amino acids, which are normal present in breast milk. These essential fatty acids are vital to human physiology by influencing the membrane traffic. So they serve as precursors to messenger molecules, which regulate diverse <clears throat> physiologic functions, immune function, muscle contractions. So if you don't have the fatty acids in uh, formula, this is why babies cry. They have colicky. So it's not going to be infamil, semicrap, all that stuff all that you do. So so um, several years ago, one of my employees had a little baby. He was, his, uh, her mom was taking care of him. He was about six or seven or eight months old. And he was just really bad constipated. He'd cry all the time. And she was she had him on traditional formula. And uh, I usually don't, you know, talk to the my staff about, hey, how's the baby? How's this? How's that? Because, you know, we just have so many staff. And um, but she said, Dr. Singleton, is there anything I can do for my baby? He's constipated. He just cries all the time. I go, well, how come he's not on the shakes? She's like, oh, he can be on one of the shakes? I go, yeah, I would probably try start with vanilla, you know, but that is the meal, that's the infant formula right there because it has everything that the child needs and the adult needs. It's dairy-free because it's lactose-free, casein-free. So they're not gonna have that um, dairy problem of lactose intolerance, but the kids are gonna get all the protein they need, but all the essential fatty acids and, and prebiotics and the probiotics and the enzymes, they're not gonna be constipated. And so you get these kids on the, the, these, these shakes and then later you can, you know, switch them up to some strawberry or chocolate or whatever. So something very, very important to do. 
And by the way, this I'll, I'll show you how you can get some of this for your kids. That that's going to be the best thing, better than any milkshake. And you you feed them this before they go to school. They're going to be they're going to do so much better in school. As infants progress from breast milk to solids, it's time to talk to parents about a plant-based diet. Children raised on plant-based diets have a reduced risk of heart disease, cancer, obesity, diabetes. And the list goes on and on. But not only that, they struggle less with acne because your skin is the mirror image of your intestinal tract. So if you've got all this acne on your skin, you know, you got some bad bacteria going on in the gut that needs to be cleared up. So, and when you get into junior high and high school, kids don't like acne, but they have that one Accutane and the, the, the pro whatever that uh, you can take, but that's really dangerous for your body. Uh, the stuff that, that kids are taking, teenagers are taking for acne. That is seriously, that's, that's a serious uh, chemical toxicity to the body that you can develop into cancer later. Um, it's also important to supply them with the proper nutrients. These habits will form a healthy lifestyle that will set the children up for success as they grow. You know, my, my, one of my sons, he's 24 now. Uh, his nickname is Broccoli Boy. When he was growing up, he loved broccoli so much that that's all he wanted to eat was broccoli. But, you know, broccoli is great. It's got so many phytonutrients in it. And, of course, he still loves broccoli. And we even made him some uh, juice bottles, which is fresh squoze and orange juice. So today, to this day, he still craves fresh squoze and orange juice. So, again, from, from being little kids, they develop these habits and these taste buds of eating good food, not mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is easy to make, but there's nothing good in mac and cheese. Then routine adjustments. So nutrition is important to a child's growth and development. Chiropractic adjustments also play a key role. I always recommend that my patients bring in their newborns into the office. And I, I've adjusted patients, like I said, young, an hour or two old. The trip to the birth canal is very traumatic for an infant. And proper alignment to align the spine can improve digestion, reduce discomfort in the first few months. So, so at home, I have a table. And I don't know, probably once or twice a week, I'm adjusting my wife and I have a 20 month old little boy and he has to have his turn. He jumps up on the table and I adjust him. Great audibles. You know, and he just laughs. He thinks it's so funny, you know, you know, from the thoracic spine you know, get him on the diversified side posture. And I mean, he just loves it. And he's so healthy. You know, he's where we, we go to church and we go to this, this, uh, he has music class and um, all the time. There are kids not there, or there are kids there that are sick, runny noses, coughing. I mean, there's so many sick kids, and people are like, what about, aren't you afraid you're, no, I'm not afraid my son's going to get sick because of what we feed him, and he gets adjusted, you know, so there's, and it, let him be exposed to that stuff. That's good. He's going to get exposed to those germs. His body's going to, you know, grow with that and know how to handle those germs. So very important. And as you, like I said, kids love it. As they grow, I recommend that they receive adjustments periodically. Proper spinal alignment and joint mobilization along with great nutrition allows children to thrive. So when I was growing up back in the 60s and 70s, uh, my mom took me to a chiropractor. None of my friends even knew what a chiropractor was. They thought it was kind of hokey. But, you know, I did, three, you know, the big sports, you know, football, basketball, baseball, um, when you could actually play all three in a year. And... Uh, and I always went to the chiropractor when I was in sports and never got hurt. And if I did have a good hit, I went to the chiropractor, he helped me out. And it was the best thing for me growing up. I was the only one in my high school that went to a chiropractor. And again, people thought I was kind of like, where are you going? Um, and I have six friends that I played school sports with that had traumatic injuries to their back, to their spine that became addicted to opioids and they're dead now, you know, um, you know, because of, their body, not knowing how to resolve from pain and then getting addicted to pain medication. So chiropractic can save your life, you know? So that's why get the kids on it. Now with early intervention, children can be taught to make healthy choices throughout their lives. As a chiropractor, you can provide nutritional support, lifestyle education, and meaningful supplementation to pediatric patients. Start by making child-friendly supplements and like the shakes and educate materials available in your clinic for parents to, to look at. This will help to ensure your adult clients, many of whom are parents, be aware of what resources do they have. Because if you go to uh, Walmart or Costco or whatever, you know, they're going to have a lot of gummies, you know, a lot of things for, for kids. And they're pretty much full of, of sucrose and syrup, or fructose corn syrup, uh, because that's going to make the kid want to eat more of those. You know, you might as well just give them jelly beans and say it's it's vitamins, you know. So you got to be really careful with what you're going to 
um, prescribed. Sometimes uh, dairy changes aren't enough. Chiropractors can offer children uh, child-friendly supplements to aid their parents' nutrition. Most vitamins capsules on the market are difficult for children to swallow. Doses for adults are easy also to forget, but there are alternatives to consider. Uh, again, chiropractors are turning to meal replacement shakes. Many of these shakes come in a variety of flavors. Here you see. Um, you can mix things like almond milk. Um, they're also much healthier than a gummy. Um, so like if the child just went on... Um, a course of antibiotics because because of an ear infection. Well, the mother should have brought the baby to you for an ear infection, not go on anti antibiotics, not you know amoxicillin. So if the child does happen to get on that, then you put them on one of these shakes, and then you put in the with the whole capsule two or three of the probiotics, and you mix that in, and it dissolves inside the shake. So you're actually getting the child more of the good probiotics back in the body that the antibiotics killed off. So we want to get the good probiotics in because the antibiotics, it killed off the, um, uh, you know, what the child has in their body uh, that was good. And so these are some, some ideas to do. And then when they start to get a little bit older, I don't know, maybe five, six, you, they can start trying to, you know, swallow some supplements. But if you can keep them in the liquid form like this, that's all they're going to need for a long time. So the decision of being a child that can dramatically affect individuals for their entire lives. As a chiropractor, you play a critical role in offering uh, holistic health services that aren't available uh, other places. It's up to you to ensure that your patients are educated about proper nutrition. If you don't know, get on it, because guess where they're going to learn it? YouTube. Do you want your patients to learn nutrition through YouTube? No, you, they need it to learn it from you. Um, know what resources you have and receive good quality care. So uh, if you want to, you can even set up some weekly or monthly uh, nutrition classes that I have all that information that I can share with you and show you how to do that. And you can set up a little flyer, say, hey, this month we're going to talk about where, what's the best protein to get? You know, what's the best nutritional shake? What's the best breakfast? What's the best dinner, lunch? And patients will show up because we're also not only going to teach you, we're going to teach you how to feed your family. So there are a lot of ways to educate your patients and their families, it's going to be really exciting. And they're going to say, you bring a big value to them and their whole family because of what you're sharing with them versus just letting them figure it out on their own because they will try to figure it out on their own. It's not going to be good. These are just some resources from uh, some of the information I, I, uh, I have. So when you download or when you go over the power slides, PowerPoints again, you'll be able to see where I got some of these resources from. So... Anyway, so it's never too late to start nutrition in your practice. You know, if you if you want any help starting nutrition in your practice, I can help you. I mean nutrition programs from like 10,000 to 100,000. Because a lot most doctors I talk to, oh, I do nutrition. I go, so what are you making? How much are you making in nutrition? And they pause because they don't want to answer that. But it's usually between three to 5,000 a month. And I'm saying, is that good for you? I'm saying, yeah, that, that's good. I'm doing about three to 5,000 a month in nutrition. Well, what if you wanted to make 10 to 100,000 a month? Would that... Be better does that sound more exciting for you well they don't know how to do that and that's where i come in so um my singleton systems.com seminar so i'm actually because we are we don't have any more room in a seminar coming up so we're going to be uh i'm going to be recording this and uh we're going to be doing a virtual on the seminar training so you'll be able to have access and watch this from your home so if you want more information about that you can uh you can send me an email or there's my phone number down there, the 903-7141. And then if you want to um, you want to order some of those shakes, it doesn't cost anything. You can set up your own free account, doctors. It's a doctor's only line. You have to go to solutions4.com and just tell them that you want to uh, start an account with them. And uh, again, there's my email or my phone number. If you have any questions, uh, I'd love to help you. Um, I get people who call me from Proactive Now helping with marketing. And um, they really need help because a lot of doctors who are starting out don't have 32 years experience like I have. And they haven't trained and coached 2,500 clinics in America. They haven't developed programs to generate, you know, up to six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars a month. Right. Very few people do that, can do that. And so that's why I love talking with these new doctors. So if you have any questions and you want me to review what you're doing, just contact Proactive too and we'll set something up.